This is Avery Tanzer from Words Radar, and I'm so thrilled to be talking with Rufus Sewell about The Diplomat. How are you, Rufus? Great, thanks, Abe. Nice to meet you. You too. It's always disarming to hear your natural accent because <laughs> you have a masterful American accent. Good. What a relief. Thank you. But what I'm most curious about for this show is you play an American who's now living in the UK and adjusting to some of the societal differences there. It's nuts. I'm so lucky to have got this role. I mean, that's the thing. I was worried, because I live in Los Angeles, now spending six, seven months a year pretending to be an American in London. It's like the irony of ironies. All this money I spent on flights. Um, and also, to tell you the truth, I was worried that the Brit actors I was going to work with were going to give me so much shit. Um, but actually, I think it's a new world. You know, there's so much international traffic, with Netflix, et cetera, et cetera, of kind of American Netflix in London, vice versa, that people are now kind of used to it. Um, but yes, it was a lot of fun, actually, being an American in London. <laughs> Are there any small cultural things that you sort of threw into the character based on your own background? Well, what would I what would I do? Do you know what I mean? I'm playing an American, and there's nothing I can bring to it, you know. That's true. That's true. Well, what appealed to you? I mean, this character again, it, it, he is I think, very meaty and very interesting. What did you like about him? I liked his humor. In fact, I liked the humor of the script. I loved the banter and the repartee and the the trash talking between him and Kate. The fact that they love each other and kind of drive each other mad as well. And they're on the out, but they're still together and they still fancy each other, but they like other people. And, you know, it's complex. And, you know, people have said, oh, it's an unusual relationship, but I don't think it is. I think what they're responding to, it's an unusual relationship to see represented, especially in a, in a show like this. Yeah, where people are either one way or the other, but this is that kind of oscillating between the two. I think there's a lot in this in this relationship that people will recognize a lot of the reality of it, of a long-term relationship and the ups and downs and ins and outs, you know. Um, but I really love the fact that he's actually a very, very honest, no bullshit person. You know, incredibly, incredibly bright, brave, ballsy. Um, in many, way, in many ways he's not like me, in some ways he is, I mean, you know, um, but the writing is so good. The writing is so good that you you read the script and you get what it needs to be. And so much of it is in the relationships, you know, um, and so much of it in terms of his effect on people is written into other people's reactions. So, you know, the trick is to not fall into trying to be that thing so much as just to try not to show people that you're not that thing, <laughs> you know? Just don't contradict. But actually, you know, um, as I said, it's, I'm, it felt so supported by the way the characters reacted to me. It felt made me feel like I was like Hal. <laughs> what is your working relationship like with Kerry? Very easy and very fun. I mean, I think we were both, I now realize we both did this job for the same reasons. We'd both read it and thought, oh shit, I'm doing this. You know, because it complicated, you know, in terms of logistics, the doing it was. It was just so inarguably my next job. <laughs> you know, they don't come along like this very often. Indeed, ever, actually. Um, that it ticked all the boxes for me. Um, and I knew her work and thought she was great. I'd never met her. Deborah Khan's shows I'd seen, I thought they were great. I'd never met her, but I had the script. So I said, yes. And then I turned up and I met um, Kerry in the makeup room, to, spoke for a couple of seconds and thought, oh, that'd be fine. She just, it was fine, we had it. It was like, I, it, and we did a scene together, it was there. And by, by that, I just mean that we didn't need to show what we were doing. We had each other, do you know what I mean? In the same way that when I met her, she got what I was saying before I finished my sentence, vice versa. We got to the same joke in a couple of seconds. We didn't even need to finish our sentences. We understood where each other was coming from. It was all done. And that's just luck. It's like being being a, 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 a complimentary height on camera. It either is or it isn't. If it is, you don't need thanking for it. It's not, you don't, shouldn't be congratulated. But if it's not, it's a lot of work. 
So that was just very easy. And um, we'd all done our research. We did various talks and stuff. But when we, we, I could learn a scene, she could learn a scene, we'd come, we'd do it together and it would, it would be there. Are there real life figures like Hal and does history remember them fondly? I think there's, well, I mean, I, I tend to like to think that the character I'm playing generally, you know, this idea you look for the living counterpart, you don't need to, you just think this is a new person I'm playing. And this new person may have that characteristic from that person, that characteristic. There are, new, there are people like any character you can mention around, of course. Uh, uh, do you mean, is there a character like that? There could be a character like that delivering milk. I mean, when I read a script and I have flashes of what it should be and things it, it, it reminds me of, it, I'm not getting flashes of things it reminds me of in the CIA or in government. I'm getting flashes from school or the park or an uncle or something like that. You draw from what you know, and that's what makes it human because these are humans and it's the human part of it that makes it interesting. And how is very interesting. He's a combination of lots of different things. In terms of politically, yeah, there's a few a few images that come to mind as a, you know, um, but I like to keep them secret. Do you think he has anything uh, in common with John Smith, another long running government figure from a different kind of universe? He's got my chin. No, I don't think he's got anything in common with him at all. <laughs> Do you appreciate the opportunity to portray such, you know, radically different different figures like that? Oh, of course. Oh, of course. I mean, you know, um, people will come up to me and say, oh, would you like to play another Nazi? Like, no, why? Do you think I'm just like into playing Nazis? It's like, it was like the contradictions of him is what was interesting. The con uh, John, John Smith, what was interesting is that there was a different character inside him. You know, that's where it was interesting. And I did that and Lord M in Victoria, this other series about young Queen Victoria at the same time, I was doing them back to back. So that was very interesting. So for me, it's like Kerry just coming straight from Cocaine Bear, that the fun of it is doing something really, seem on the face of it, really radically different. I mean, you know, in, in terms of the way that one would describe it in one sentence, yeah. Was the experience of this, as far as a TV show, very different from other shows that you've worked on in the past, just filming and everything? Well, it was a very pleasant experience. It was, you know, everyone, it was such a good cast. And by good, I don't just mean talented, I mean grateful, happy, you know, just happy to be there and um, overqualified that and any time we did a read through, you just marvel at how so many actors I knew and recognized from the British theater scene and for the come in and do just a few lines, few lines that they got the best actors to come in just to do a little bit. So you knew that if at any point they were to have a storyline that would bring that person back, they would be able to carry it. You know, you could get a storyline of any of them and that you felt that all the way along. And working with Kerry and working with Deb, who was, as a showrunner, just so extraordinary. And the confidence that one had in the scripts, because, you know, you it's a leap of faith. You do it based on a script or a couple of scripts. As from my perspective, I didn't know what the new scripts were gonna be like. And I've had tough experiences like that in the past where they're kind of, uh, when you have to fight to keep what you signed on for as a, as a quality. The, the the quality of the scripts was so consistent that I ended up just deciding I wasn't gonna worry about whether the finished product delivered what I was experiencing. I was just, I've been trying to do that more and more as I get older, is like not worry about the results, not try to to tie the my, my idea of whether it's time well spent or not by whether you get a thumbs up or a thumbs down in a year's time, but just make that not my business. So I decided I wasn't really worried about whether it's gonna be as great as all that, but just the great experience of doing it. And having seen a few episodes, I think I actually quite like it too. So, <laughs> so I think that's a win really. 
So you said you've only seen a few episodes. Do you think this is the kind of show that everybody should watch everything right away? Because all eight episodes are dropping on the same day? I certainly think that you should power through. I mean, I, I love episode one and two, but I think it certainly gets better. And be I mean, the, the scripts are fantastic. And, and I, I just, I think getting into, what's that voice coming Um the, the, yeah, I mean, I'm in it, but I watched it all the way to, to the end of three on one night. And, you know, I knew what was happening, but still I just wanted to watch another one. I do think watch a few in a go, certainly. Yeah. And without spoiling anything, do you think that this is a character you'd like to bring back for future seasons if that was... I would definitely like to, if I could. I think there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot to, of play in it. Um, I really had a lovely time where, you know, we've all got our fingers crossed. You know, otherwise or, onwards and upwards, do something else. But this is and this and I'll take this as a win. But um, yeah, I'd love to do some more if you can. I know you also worked on a show recently that is a an unusual uh, experience of watching, which is Kaleidoscope. What can you talk about with that show? Very, very different experience. And that was, you know, again, you know, reading one or two episodes and not knowing what the others were. But it was that was a little more discombobulating because in the other episodes, it was kind of like a different person in the background. So that was a more of a confusing job. Um, you know, very, very different experience. And uh, today we're talking, it's actually the season premiere of the final season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which obviously, you know, not in the season of five, but I really did enjoy your guest appearance. What Thank was it like you. just stepping into that show for a... I loved, your natural accent, though. With my natural accent, yes. I, I loved I loved doing that. That was so much, so much fun. Um No, it was a it was a real delight to do that, to come in and just like it was like two or three, I think just two days' work or two or three days' work. Um and it was quite intense because a lot of words and you know. Um but I was very welcomed. Um it was just a really lovely couple of days. Um so yeah, I'm very grateful for it. A lot of fun. As soon as I knew I'd be speaking with you, I knew I wanted to talk about something, and I actually happened to find my DVD today. Is that the uh, director's? 25... Is that the director's cut, or I don't think so. It doesn't you... even. It's so funny. The DVD doesn't even like have any art on it. It's, yeah, yeah, back, old you know, school. Back in the day. You need to watch the director's cut. The re director's cut with that one. What's the, what's the difference? Well, um, New Line made made him put um, an explanation at the beginning. Um, the director's cut, which ruined the film, as far as I was concerned. So when you read the script, you didn't know they weren't on Earth until the end. New Line were worried that people wouldn't understand. So they put a, a thing that said they took us into space, they took us an experiment, and they explained everything so that all of that was killed. And the people that didn't understand still didn't understand. So I um, know I think it's one of the rare occasions where a director's cut I mean, there are people who still love the original. I get it. But I think the director's cut is, that's the one. So if you're I'll a fan, sure and yeah, out. 25 years, that's I, terrifying. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think it's definitely influenced a lot of other sci-fi. It's a lot darker than I think what we used to see. And now we're sort of getting more into that yeah, these days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was very... Yeah, I mean, if you were to watch it now, it would probably look derivative because so much has been just, it influenced so much, you know? Also a different kind of Keeper Sutherland. I think his career has gone in a very different direction yeah, than a very playing different that brand sort of, of supporting Keeper. bad guy. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Well, are there is there anything else we haven't talked about that you'd like to share? Anything else that really stands out from your career that people watching you in The Diplomat should then go ahead and check out? No. Nope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I've got nothing to sell you. <laughs> Well, for, fortunately, I think that The Diplomat offers um, a, a lot of scenery chewing and a lot of uh, great drama. So <laughs> great. thank you so much. Thank you very uh, much. It's been a pleasure to speak with you. Thanks a lot. Nice talking to you.